carried the burden for regional transportation. Our neighborhoods were isolated and our residents suffered the impact of pollution as an interstate, a major state highway, and rail lines slaced through our community. For the record, I want to state that the governor and the Commonwealth has a legal obligation to extend the Green Line to Somerville by 2014. Yeah. Somerville, on the right track. I'm here at Joe Crenatoni, and we're here to tell you that Somerville is on the right track. And when the state finally fulfills its commitment and builds the Green Line by 2014, some of them will really rock your socks up, and that's a campaign promise I can keep. Some of them are Some of them Somerville, Massachusetts, named All-America City in 2009 by the National Civic League. Notoriously dubbed Slummerville for decades, the city with a historically tough reputation has recently been lauded as the best-run city in the Commonwealth and a model of innovation and best practices from individuals and organizations ranging from the Boston Globe magazine Thank to you. President and First Lady Obama. Somerville isn't Slummerville anymore. <laughs> Somerville is home to more than 80,000 residents who speak more than 52 different languages in just 4.2 square miles. It is the fifth most densely populated community in the nation, but has become notable for its ability through influential leadership and resident engagement to provide exceptional services to residents while spending the least per capita of any community in Massachusetts. The city has become a vibrant business and arts community and a place where tens of thousands of people have lived, worked, played, and raised their families for generations. Today, the streets are safer, the playgrounds and parks are cleaner, and as a result, the housing market is booming. On the weekends, people pour into Somerville's popular Davis and Union Squares to frequent the area's many restaurants, art galleries, and music clubs. And Somerville is gaining national recognition for its popular neighborhoods. Hollywood film and television productions continue to look to Somerville for inspiration and production space. But how did Somerville break away from its troubled past to become an all-America city? And where is the city on the move headed? To uncover the path to Somerville's future, you need only to look at Somerville's past. Somerville in late 69 to 70. It was a time of real social foment. There were a lot of young people coming into town because of course rents were cheap. You know, 60s kids who needed a place to, um, to call home and needed a cause and Somerville became their cause. At the same time at City Hall, it was the same old crowd that, you know, was used to doing things in the same old way. And as it turned out, um, you know, after a time we discovered it was a fairly corrupt way of doing business. Every year they set a tax rate, collected the money for the taxes, but nothing improved. And, and if you don't improve, you, you deteriorate. And Somerville was really deteriorating at a rapid pace. It became evident that uh, the people were getting upset. Uh, they were getting upset with high taxes, not having a voice in government. It was really a revolution ready to happen. The revolution began with the election of an outsider to the top spot at City Hall. S. Lester Ralph, an Episcopal minister with no political background, became mayor of Somerville, voted in by an electorate tired of the status quo. The city wanted a change, and they were not interested in your last name or your personal faith that they wanted somebody that was going to make the changes that they felt the city needed. All of a sudden, things started to change. The mayor just started opening up the books 
something that had never been done. If you're not making deals, you don't mind transparency. And I had no deals to make. I mean, I just wanted the, the city to rise up and be what it could be. With Mayor Ralph at the helm, the people of Somerville began to take action to make their city what they wanted it to be. Then you saw people speaking out on talk radio. They talked about better education for the schools. They talked about better public safety. They talked about better housing. They talked about better playgrounds for their children to play in. Uh, I, I had a sense that I was, I was acting the will of the people. Residents finally had a voice in city government, something that is still celebrated and embraced today. Once a reform mayor opened up the doors, and let journalists and citizens and everyone else in, um, things really began to change. The change culminated two years after Mayor Ralph took office, when Somerville was named a 1972 All-America City. I was attending the uh, Pope Elementary School. We heard about All-America City and how this was a really big thing. And we'd see the signs around the city the, and, the, and the pride in the community. One of the key issues was the community groups. Uh, drawing the community into the government. It really changed Somerville around, and rightfully so, Somerville deserved the All-American City Award. After serving four terms, Lester Ralph stepped down as mayor of Somerville. But his courage and leadership in the face of adversity and his faith in citizen empowerment laid the groundwork for the leaders who followed him to overcome the economic and social challenges they faced in the years to come. When Eugene Bruin took office in January of 1980, Somerville's financial situation had again taken a turn for the worse. The statewide enactment of Proposition 2.5 required cities to lower property taxes at a time when communities were already struggling through a national recession. The, the fire equipment was bad, the, the, the police equipment was bad, I had no money. The state was not giving us much money because they really didn't have the resources, and I had to cut taxes by law 15% three years in a row. So I couldn't do anything for three years. But Mayor Bruin didn't sit around and wait for a recovery. He reached out and brought the community into the conversation. I talked with business, I talked with everybody that I could talk to, all of the citizens of different organizations. Everything I told them was the truth, and, I, and they believed Convincing residents and businesses to bring an MBTA subway stop to economically depressed Davis Square would not be as easy. I remember as, as sort of a new proprietor looking out and seeing Davis Square absolutely dead after five o'clock. Yeah, it was very quiet. I always say there were tumbleweeds rolling through the streets back then, uh, really were. There were very few businesses open. Uh, there were a lot of shuttered uh, storefronts. Somerville was a very different place. It was a city struggling within itself. A lot of people were concerned that the red line would change the community, not for the better, but for the worse. Families and generations lived here. And who are these people? Are we gonna have a bunch of renters who don't care? Once again, Mayor Bruin gave citizens a forum to express their concerns. And together, the city, residents, and businesses brought a new mode of transportation and a new energy to Somerville. I worked with the Davis Square Civic Association, Ward 6 Civic Association, and I promised them that we would have a say in how the subway was going to be built. We would have, this, have a say on how Davis Square would be during the transition period. And in came the subway, the brand new sidewalks, the brand new trees, the, uh, the, the storefront uh, program that we had, uh, all of those different things, and Davis Square began to take off. Today, Davis Square is a vibrant destination full of restaurants, boutiques, and retail shops that attract thousands of people to Somerville every week. I think if you took away the red line today, though, there'd be hundreds of more people, actually thousands opposed or advocating against any such move, but because I think people over time have seen the benefits, understand the benefits of transit-oriented development, smart growth, being able to take cars off our street, be able to access uh, uh, all the different services, that was really a catalyst and motivating factor to fight for the Green Line to extend that through the community, which we're gonna realize in the next few years. Whether it's improving transportation, enhancing education, or creating more green space, Somerville's leaders have focused on transparency in city government and working in partnership with residents and businesses to make the city a safe, 
clean and vital place to be. It is always crucial to show the people what you're doing and how you're doing it. It is their money after all. It is taxpayer dollars. They work very hard for their money and we have an obligation as public officials to treat that money carefully and do the very best we can with it. I think you've had a succession of some great leadership. You've had a bunch of leaders that thought a lot more about instead of the next fiscal quarter, they thought about the next quarter century. I think there's a lot of interest in, in participating in, in the community here. Um, most people that are here realize that uh, it's important to participate if they want to make something of it. It's a process of teaching people that they can have a say and they can have a voice and that, um, you know, I think the current administration has done an excellent job. Uh, Mayor Curta Tony has really given a lot of opportunities and that people are, for the first time, starting to step out and realize that they actually can have a say in how things are going to go in the neighborhood. The people have to realize what they have and they have to fight to keep it. Make sure who they elect as mayor. Make sure who they elect as, as aldermen and school committee people, state senators, reps. That's the key, because it all revolves around them. My business touches on five different communities, and the one that I enjoy the most is Somerville, because when there's an issue, the community comes out, they get involved, they like to ha have their side heard. Somerville feels really alive because it's so diverse. There's so many different ideas, there's so many people coming together. It's just an amazing amount of residents who will just band together to, to say, yes, you have to listen to me. When you have residents who feel that they can do that and they have a way to do that, then your city is only going to keep getting better. 30 years ago, the people of Somerville voted for change at City Hall. Their votes led to a new Somerville, a re-energized, revived city of diverse people committed to actively building their community and overcoming its challenges together. Lester Ralphs, he represented the community standing up on its own to make major changes. And you know, there were tough wars, tough battles, those things don't get done easily. We are reaping the benefits of many of his um, initiatives in the city to reform city government, to bring accountability and transparency. And, uh, you know, we've been fortunate to have such great leaders from S. Lester Ralph to Jim Bruin to Mike Capuano, um, you know, to really lay a great foundation for us to be where we're at today. Because of our past, I actually think Somerville has been for a long time and is now probably the cleanest city around. And I think it has a lot to do with a lot of us bear those scars and we, we remember the bad old days and don't want to go back to it. We will be the model of how to get things done as a community, as a city government, delivering our services. City Hall always, always seemed to be over there and the concern that you can't get into City Hall, you can't get answers from City Hall, you can't get service from City Hall. Uh, and that's not the reputation we want to have. We wanted you to have the ability to make one call to City Hall to ask a question, find out information, to request a service. Anyone who's part of this community and wants to be here. And that's what makes us great. And my job's easy because I have a whole community that believes that way as well and, and uh, wants to make sure that that's the direction we're moving in and is willing to fight for it. And we came together as a community to, to fight and advocate for the commitment to build a green line. We come together as a community to make sure we plan and develop the Assembly Square. And we've come together as a community and to, again, shape our neighborhoods and shape our future. And as a mayor, people say, well, how, what's the easiest thing about your job? And I say, you live in my city, the people there, they fight for the best, they want the best, but they are standing side by side with you to get there.